Good evening and welcome to News Review. The frontier was effectively closed for over an hour on Monday morning after a suspect package prompted air traffic control to close the runway. Thousands of cross-frontier workers were struck during rush hour and able to make their way to work in Gibraltar. It was the first of two incidents at the airfield this week. Earlier this year, the Royal Gibraltar Regiment's IED team were called into action in the heart of town. This morning's incident was much more disruptive, though, coming as it did when thousands of cross-frontier workers were making their way into Gibraltar. Well, this morning, uh, one of the Defence Fire Service coming into work uh, just after 7 uh, discovered a, a box outside uh, the fire uh, station there on the, on the airfield. Um, wasn't happy with it, did the right thing, called the police. Um, we responded um, and, uh, together with the Royal Gibraltar Police and uh, still not happy with the situation. Um, the Royal Gibraltar Regiment uh, explosive disposal team turned out. That led to uh, an examination of the, of the box from the outside by them, by the professionals, um, and ultimately a controlled explosion of the box. Um, regrettably, in order to, for this to happen, uh, we had to close the road, uh, and so therefore uh, some people will have been inconvenienced this morning. We had to create a, a cordon. This cordon had an impact on the frontier, and unfortunately vehicles and pedestrians were prevented from coming into Gibraltar. Um, from, from Spain and likewise from town coming towards um, the frontier. Um, it took some time to deal with, um, uh, well over an hour, and, and obviously naturally uh, a, a lengthy delay of, of this nature causes a great impact on, on our traffic flow uh, into Gibraltar. Um, the result was that eventually when we did manage to deal with the incident, um, there was a lot of traffic that had to come into Gibraltar from Spain uh, and, and pedestrians. And so obviously they had a disruption on, on people's lives uh, this morning. I think if we can take, in this case, uh, an innocent uh, situation, uh, which is uh, regrettable but, but innocent, but help to uh, exercise us as, uh, as the different forces involved in this. And what we ended up with is a very slick operation, a uh, very professional response by both police forces and the uh, Royal Gibraltar Regiment. The Defence Police reopened the runway at about 9am, upon which time the contents of the parcel had been established. In this case it was some uh, disposable cups, uh, but uh, better to be safe than sorry, and what we've ended up with is a good result. As I say, regret that the public were inconvenienced, but uh, obviously these things happen. After the runway reopened, the RGP asked commuters to be patient. With no traffic having been allowed across for over an hour, there was a significant backlog of cars and pedestrians. But it seemed to move relatively quickly. It was only disposable cups today, but, the authorities have argued, better safe than sorry. Meanwhile, access to and from the frontier was closed late on Wednesday night as the police and the Royal Gibraltar Regiment carried out three controlled explosions on a suspect parcel on the runway. At around quarter to ten last night, a report of a suspect package in a car near the runway put in motion a joint operation which led to the airfield being temporarily closed once again. Roads to and from the airport were cordoned off until around quarter to twelve with three controlled explosions carried out. In this case, uh, an individual uh, called in a bag that had been put into a vehicle, uh, couldn't identify the owner of the bag. Uh, quite properly, uh, the, the, the individual who's an airport worker uh, called, the, called, the, called it in. We then kicked in uh, normal procedures, which is uh, we looked at it ourselves. Uh, we call in, uh, work closely with the RGP on, on such things, um, and still didn't like the, what we were seeing, put the cordon in place and uh, called in the uh, regiment's uh, bomb disposal team. Although last night's operation took place at a much quieter time than Monday morning's rush hour incident, there was some disruption, 
with the EasyJet flight from Gatwick, already delayed as a result of strike action in France, temporarily diverted to Seville before refueling and returning to Gibraltar once the runway was cleared. The Royal Gibraltar Police also worked together with the Guardia Civil and Policia Nacional regarding people and cars attempting to cross over from Spain. Luckily, uh, it wasn't at the same time of day and at time of night that there was much, uh, there was a substantially less flow of traffic and pedestrians in the area. So the diversions we, we made were a lot easier to control and manage than the ones previously during the course of the week. Although this is the second such incident at the airport within a week, the authorities believe this is just a coincidence. Obviously, uh, officers are carrying out their duties and carrying out the checks, so that's something they need to do. So, uh, in relation to concerns, there's no, no uh, information, there's no intelligence to say that we should be. Um, it's just officers carrying out their routine checks. It's uh, one of those things where um, it was deemed to be suspicious and the procedures that kicked in were absolutely the right ones. And uh, I, I'd, I'd commend the, uh, the, 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 the guy who called it in because it's exactly the right thing uh, we would want to, to happen. Uh, the procedures that are then followed are just the, the natural course of events. We want everybody to stay safe and secure. It's about keeping Gibraltar secure. It's about keeping this airfield secure. The GDP says while a further investigation is ongoing, it's ruled out any criminal intent. However, it's keen to emphasize the importance of vigilance and ensure lessons are learned to minimize repetition. This week we learned that the European Commission will be sending a delegation to examine the Gibraltar border next Tuesday. Sources in Brussels confirmed to GBC that all three governments, Gibraltar, UK and Spain, have been notified and that a team of experts on border movement will be examining how the Commission's recommendations are being implemented. Last November, the Commission prepared a report with recommendations to the United Kingdom and Spain to improve the flow across the border. The deadline expired over a month ago, but border queues continue in both directions. In fact, June has turned out to be the worst month of the year so far, with peak queuing time at over five hours. Gibraltar has completed the work on the recommendations made to it by the European Commission, but Spain has barely started apart from an architect's drawing of the infrastructural changes planned. The Gibraltar government has already written to the European Commission to tell them everything they've done, as well as Spain's delays in complying. The chief minister has also raised the issue with Europe Minister David Lidington, who's also expected to visit Gibraltar in the next few weeks. GBC has now learned that a second visit by the European Commission is planned for next Tuesday. An experts group will monitor the progress on both sides. Gibraltarians will be forgiven for being skeptical about this latest visit, given that the last visit didn't achieve the results that they had been hoping for. But Spain will have to answer for what has been perceived as a distinct lack of progress, whilst Gibraltar has implemented everything that has been asked of them. Meanwhile, the Minister for Europe, David Liddington, will be in Gibraltar on Monday and Tuesday. The aim of the visit is to assess the Gibraltar-Spain border firsthand, as well as to meet with the government. Mr Liddington said he was delighted to be visiting Gibraltar again and looks forward to seeing some of the Gibraltar government's initiatives. He also says he's hoping to meet as wide a cross-section of the community as possible. A former Secretary of State for Defence this week stressed the importance of MPs keeping in touch with Gibraltar and rallying to the defence of the ROC in the light of the continuing harassment by Spain. Dr Liam Fox was in Gibraltar paying a visit to the Chief Minister at number six. Yes, I think it's very important that politicians in, in Westminster um, come and see what is actually happening here uh, and understand the tremendous prosperity that's being generated here but also the frustration at the repeated and unacceptable behaviour of the Spanish government. Well, it's always a pleasure to see Dr Fox back in Gibraltar. Anybody who's been Minister for the Ministry of Defence understands the importance of Gibraltar strategically, and most members of the Conservative Party instinctively have an approach to Gibraltar, which is very much the approach that most Gibraltarians uh, would expect them to have, of understanding the importance of the relationship between Gibraltar and the United Kingdom.
The GSD announced this week its third round of policy initiatives, this time on the subject of enhanced democracy. Measures aim to involve the electorate in parliamentary affairs and remove the sense of detachment from local politics the party feels exists. The GSD advocates a selection process to statutory bodies, a public accounts committee, and the establishing of a committee to investigate allegations of lying in Parliament. The Gibraltar Social Democrats have described this latest set of policy objectives as enhanced democracy. They aim to ensure that voters can participate in the parliamentary process throughout the term of a government, and not just at elections. They also aim to give the government and opposition greater opportunities to work together, give the opposition a broader role, and ensure that government becomes more accountable for its actions. I don't believe in the punch and duty style of politics. I believe in a progressive, inclusive and government and opposition working together for the better good. There are times in our community that we must robustly oppose the government on key issues, i.e. the management of our handling of our relations with Spain, on the management of our economy and the structuring of public finances. But there are many areas on which the government and the opposition can work together for the better of the community. I don't think people want to see spats and fights Small though they may be, but when they're published in, in the media, they're huge and they're blown up. We need to look at ways in which the government can work together with the opposition. And this policy is about that. It's about enhancing contributions by the government and opposition in relation to working together. It's about public participation in the process. Well, a GSD government in 16 years in office has never really been known for its inclusion of the opposition. Uh, that is an unusual uh, comment to make. Um, I say it for these reasons. And I think that we've had a change of leadership. Uh, Sir Peter stepped down as leader. Danny has taken over. We've gone through a huge period of introspection. We've reflected on the loss of the election. We really need to change our politics. We need to change the way in which we do politics. No more fighting. Let's work together. On areas where we need to fight, we will, in relation to how we handle the relations with Spain. On the, on the management of our economy, we will continue to press the government for answers in relation to Gibraltar Savings Bank and credit finance. But we will continue to strive to work together. We have held out an olive branch to the Chief Minister two times. Once in relation to our attendance at the Committee 2024, where, you know, in contravention of the policy that we had when Sir Peter was leader, we said no. We will attend the Committee 24 with the Chief Minister on an agreed position for the sake of national unity on the question of Spain. We've also said that we will coordinate a strategy with the Chief Minister in respect of his handling with Spain. We have, we have made the approach to the government. Meanwhile, the government claimed there's been more discussion, debate and action on the question of democratic reform since the election of the GSOP Liberal government than ever before under the previous administration. The government believes the opposition statement fails to explain why the GSD did not implement any of the measures they now advocate over the 16 years they were in office. It also feels it displays a marked lack of respect to the Select Committee on Parliamentary Reform, whose work is ongoing, which includes the opposition, and which encompasses the issues they have now raised. The GSOP Liberals reiterate they've increased the frequency of meetings of Parliament, as well as resources available to Parliament, ensured the faster publication of Hansard, set up a Parliament website, and allowed meetings to be televised. Coupled to this, they say, the government has introduced direct democracy by allowing citizens and all the media to question the chief minister once a quarter. The government also points out it set up a commission on democratic and political reform, with the select committee now considering the implementation of appropriate recommendations of its report. It feels it's important to note that three of the five points raised by the opposition were already the subject of deliberation by the commission. It recalls the Commission did not recommend the creation of a Public Accounts Committee. It also feels the role of determining allegations of lying to Parliament is very clear and adds the GSD was very happy with the mechanism when they were in government. On appointments to statutory bodies, the government says if these were made directly by government and opposition, they would actually be more politicised and not less. It expresses surprise that the GSD should advocate this now, when, it claims, it did not consider this appropriate in government when the GSLP Liberals proposed a similar mechanism for the appointment of the GBC board, when it was responsible for the political content and balance in the programming of the public broadcaster. 
The Deputy Chief Minister, who is ministerially responsible for the delivery of the reforms, says the opposition is perfectly entitled to comment on whatever it likes, but that it must understand it does not operate in a political vacuum. The government, he says, has already taken great strides to improve the quality of democracy in Gibraltar from where they left it. And there is still the unfinished work of the Select Committee on Parliamentary Reform to complete. Dr. Joseph Garcia adds the GST's comments do not make any sense because no opposition has ever had it so good.